Praise the Lord. It's a pleasure to be back once again uh, and have this wonderful opportunity to share God's word with all of you. I think the last time I'm here on a Saturday service is two months ago. And it is really a great joy to be back again. Amen. Praise the Lord. If you have your Bible, uh, please turn with me to the book of Acts. Today we like to look at Acts chapter 17. The topic given to me is the importance of the local church. The importance of the local church. Bill Hybo says this. He says the local church is the hope of the world. The local church, our church, this church, is and any other church, is the hope of the world. And I think that statement demonstrates and shows how important the church is. The church is the hope of the world. But we live in a world our forefathers probably will not be able to recognize. In what ways can the church today continue to contribute to the betterment of society? And we just had an introduction or you know, a brief report briefing about Rainbow Home. And it is just an example of what the church can do to bring about love and forgiveness and healing to the community around us. The church can do that all right, by contributing to the betterment of society, by living to the purpose of its existence. The church is not just an institution. The church is not just another address. It's not just a building. All right? And it's not just, uh, how to say, uh, a movement even. Okay? And, but the church is here for a purpose. And God put His church here so that through the church, the glory of the Lord and the plans of God will be fulfilled. Acts chapter 17, I want to call your attention to verse 5 uh, as an introduction. There are two sets of uh, characters all right, in Acts chapter 17. Now, which one would we want to characterize the church? There are two sets of character in Acts chapter 17, the good and the bad. Which one do we want to characterize the church or the church of praise in Bukit Indah? Would we want the one that is mentioned in verse 5 to 9? I'd like to read it to you. Acts chapter 17, verse, 9, verse 5 to 9. In verse 5 it says, But the Jews were jealous, so they rounded up some bad characters from the marketplace, formed a mob, and started a riot in the city. They rushed to Jason's house in search of Paul and Silas in order to bring them out to the crowd. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some other brothers before the city officials, shouting, These men who have caused trouble all over the world have now come here, and Jason has welcomed them into his house. They are all defying Caesar's decrees, saying that there is another king, one called Jesus. And when they heard this, the crowd and the city officials were thrown into turmoil. Then they made Jason and the other, other post born and, or, and, and let them go. Do we want this to characterize the church? Do we want to read in the papers tomorrow that members of Church of Praise, Bukit Indah, they were jealous, they rounded up some bad characters from uh, Jaya Jusko, formed a mob and started a riot in this city. They rushed to Jason's house and on and so forth, you know, and the rest. Do we want what we read just now to, 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 to describe, you know, the members of Church of Praise, Bukit Indah? I'm, I'm, I'm very sure your response is no. Or do we want the one in verse 13? Verse 13 says, When the Jews in Thessalonica learned that Paul was preaching the word of God at Berea, they went there also agitating the crowds and stirring them up again. You know, do we want that you know, to, be this, to, to be said of, of us you know, in the papers? No, I don't think so. What is the, why is the church here for? What is the function of the church? Why is the church so important? I'd like to share with you uh, three things. Sorry. 
shows I have been away for quite a while. <laughs> All right. The first thing is that a church is here to renew our minds. The church is here to renew our minds. Uh, verse 2 and 4, I like to read. It says, As was his custom, Paul went into the synagogue. And on three Sabbath days, he reasoned with them from the scriptures, explaining and proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. This Jesus I am proclaiming to you is the Messiah, he says. Some of the Jews were persuaded and joined Paul and Silas, as did a large number of God-fearing Greeks and quite a few prominent women. The church is not overly sensitive. The church is not emotional, too emotional, to the extent of being irrational. The church desires to be a community of sensible people and led by wise people. Leaders, Amen. That's what the church desires to be. And that's what the church wants to do. Okay? To renew our minds. How should the Christ, well, the Christian mind, how should we describe the Christian mind? Alright? The Christian mind should be rational. The Christian mind should be rational or reasonable. Right? Rational and reasonable. In verse 2 it says that uh, Paul went to the synagogue and, he, uh, and on three Sabbaths, he reasoned with them. He reasoned with them all right, from the scriptures. May, may, may we be reasonable people. May we be sensible people. May we be rational people. Okay? It says here that Paul reasoned with them from the scripture. Okay? And, and may we be, be, be reasonable. May we reason from, from a, a, an authoritative source. You know, not, not whims and fancies, not according to, 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 to being too sensitive about certain issues, groundless, baseless arguments, you know. Right? And but really our arguments, our reasons, our, the word, what we are saying is based on something that is authoritative, you know, acceptable. Of course, here he's talking about the Bible, but even in other areas of our life, it's based on certain things that is collectively embraced and accepted, recognized right, by a larger body of people. Amen. Praise the Lord. So may the church be reasonable and rational. May the church also be logical. Okay? The Bible says here, Paul not only reasoned with them, but he explained, he explained why Jesus is the Messiah, why Jesus has to suffer and rise from the dead. You know, of course, here I'm not just talking about Jesus who died and suffered, but the word explaining, right? May we also be the kind of people who have logic, you know, who are logical, okay, in, in our presentation, and I do hope my presentation today is logical, and be logical in our argument, in our explanation, and in our reasoning, you know. There is logic, you know. It's one plus one is two. It is never one plus one equals three. No, you know, that kind of thing, right? May the church be rational, reasonable, be logical. Last, it is also factual. Right? It is also factual. It says you're proving that the Messiah had to suffer and rise from the dead. Paul reasoned, Paul explained, and he proved. Wow. Takes a lot of discipline. You know, he's not one who sweep everything under the carpet. Take it from me. No, or something like that. No, he was factual. May the church, may we, the Christian community, be factual in why we say what we say and why we do what we do. As much as possible. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was driving a Malacca with my wife. We went to buy lunch. I'm not sure whether I told this story before. And in this street called uh, Bunga Raya in Malacca. Okay? It's a very narrow street. Uh, but cars are allowed to park on the left. There is parking space. Uh, but on the right, you can't park. There's a yellow line. Right? But the place is congested, and my wife wants to buy lunch from this particular store. And you never argue with a woman, okay? <laughs> and so, uh, and I also don't mind buying from the store. So, like, huh? right? so I park my car as close as possible to the right. No more parking lot on the left. So, so making sure the right in the middle sufficient space for cars to move on. But out of nowhere, I saw a lady on a motorbike pass by, and she shouted, Manko! You know? Now, I don't know what is Manko. I, all I know is the Manko we eat, put food and we eat. But she shouted, Manko! She went off. 
And I turned around, oh my goodness, what was I thinking when I parked the car? You know what happened? When I look back, everybody is waiting for me to move. Because I blocked the road, they can't move, everybody cannot move. Congested, you know. Because uh, the way I parked was a narrow, a bottleneck kind of thing. and Everybody cannot move. So if I don't move, they all cannot move. So I, there's a big jam behind me. And so when she shouted Manko, she was referring to me. <laughs> It's like somebody came and tapped me on the shoulder. Hey, Einstein, what were you thinking when you parked your car here? Huh? You know? Or, or in our local language, hey, see Ota! See Ota! Hey, no, see Bandai! Pake la skit Ota! Other, other, Ota into other, skit sa Japan. Where was your brain? No brainer. This is a no, this driver is a no brainer. No brain. No, don't weigh his brain. Don't you know? Don't, isn't he aware of the congestion that he has caused? Who are you? Know? Manko! Shouted, you know. And everybody knew what is Manko except me. And that's why they call me Manko, I think. And, and I asked my wife, the lady shouted Manko. My wife said he was, she was referring to me. <laughs> oh, may the church be renewed in our mind. You know, when we were, I, I come from a Pentecostal charismatic background. That means when I first joined the church, the church that I joined uh, is, was, is a, a Pentecostal charismatic. And so those days were very extreme in some of our views. And uh, only those who are charismatic go to heaven. <laughs> only those who are Pentecostal go to heaven. Right? And yes, that was our view. We are the only true Christian around. You know? So the rest, Methodist, Presbyterian, oh, they are not going to go to heaven. <laughs> oh, we, we, that, that's, that, I, I, mean, I mean, we were taught. We were taught. That's it. We were taught. <laughs> okay? And of course, uh, the emphasis was faith in Jesus that saves them. And there were many other things also. You know, we, we asked our pastor, can we drink good beer? And she said, no. I said, Why no? Because the word beer is there, so cannot drink. <laughs> and we believe him. We believe him. Uh, of course, that was, that was how many years ago? 30, 40 years ago. Right? We can't go and watch a movie. <laughs> Those days, we don't have Cineplex. Huh? So the cinema is a big building by itself. Okay? So at night, when they off all the light, uh, ooh, it's a very scary place. Right? And those were the days. Uh, right? So we don't go. And we say the cinema is a synagogue of Satan. So we don't go. <laughs> <laughs> right? A lot of things we don't do. We don't buy insurance. We, get, we don't buy property. I'm not saying we're right. Huh? Those, that was my background. We don't buy insurance. Why? You cannot believe God will protect you? Wow. You know? And ha, yes. And, and, and if you buy property, hey, Jesus is coming. Why buying property? Oh, yeah. yeah. That was what was said during those days. Huh? I, I still remember, you know. Um, and on and so forth. Of course, we have come a long way. And we realize that uh, it is not necessarily true. Lah, huh? All right. And uh, so Manko, Manko has become appealing. Yeah, Manko has become <laughs> <laughs> or whatever. Right? And, and so maybe there are a lot of things in our mind, you know, we need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, renew my mind. And uh, our understanding about so many things. Okay? And, uh, and renew our mind. Of course, we learn from the Lord, we learn from the Spirit, and we learn from one another. We learn from those who have gone ahead. And they come back and they, they are, in their wisdom, in their experience, they are able to share with us, okay, so that we can learn also from them. So may the church be renewed in our minds and we come to church so that we will also be renewed in our mind. Uh, Romans 12 verse 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay? So, so we must not conform to the pattern of this world, but we need to be transformed by, in the renewing of our mind. And when that happens, we will be able to test and approve what is God's will. And God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect. Praise the Lord right, for that. So we are not a bunch of emotional or hyper-spiritual people. We want to be people with right minds so that we can think clearly before we act. All right? We want our minds to be guided by the wisdom of God. And God's wisdom always leads to life. And the church is here to do that okay, in our lives. Praise the Lord. Let me move on to my second point. All right, not only to be renewed in our minds, but also to be refreshed in our hearts. To be refreshed in our hearts. Uh, verse 11 and verse 12. It says, Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica. 
for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, as did also a number of prominent Greek women and many, many Greek men as well. The church is not just a name or an institution or a building. The church is a community of believers, not just walls, but flesh and blood, so to speak. Our statements of faith are not mere confessions, okay, verbal confessions. We desire to be true on the inside also. That means what we say is what is inside us. Of course, we are not perfect. Our journey is still long, but we try our best and we want to also. That what we confess is what we believe inside, is what we are. If we can open our heart, you will see the same thing. All right? And if we are not where we ought to be, at least we are making good progress, praise the Lord. And uh, in the church, we are also interested in how we feel, not just how we look. All right? Not that we are emotional, but we, that means we, we look on the inside, on the who we are, and not just on the outside, the physical. And, and that's why the gospel that we have come to believe is a gospel of forgiveness and renewal. Forgiveness not externally, but forgiveness inside us. Right? There is no condemnation, there is no guilt. We are free. The Son has set you free indeed. And of course, no one has done no wrong and everyone feels broken on the inside at times. Okay? But God desires to renew us inwardly in our hearts. So the church is here to refresh our hearts to renew our mind and to refresh us in our hearts. The Bible says that the Jews in Berea is of more noble character. Okay, in verse 11, the Berean Jews were of more noble character. That means the emphasis is on the inside, on who we are in our hearts. And that's why, you know, Revelation says, Jesus knocked at the door of our hearts because that's where it really matters. That's where real change begins, right? At the door, uh, in the door, in, the, in, in our hearts. We need to be open to truth, right? Open to truth. We're going back to, uh, to be renewed in our mind. We, we thought we, 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 we found it. We thought we, we had the answer. But then we realized that not quite, you know? And, and so we need to go. We need to probe deeper. We need to go further. We need to search the scripture again. We need to have a better understanding and on and so forth about the do certain doctrines we come to believe and, and certain things we do in our practices and in the ways of doing things. We, 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 are, we have not come to the final stop, okay? We are still in a journey of becoming better and, and so that God can do a greater work through our lives. So there is an openness to truth. The Bible says, they received the message with great eagerness. They received the message, the message that they want to hear and the message that they want to hear also. Okay? The message that they want to hear and the message that they don't want to hear. The message that they need to hear, yes. And they receive all the message as long as it is from the Lord. They receive with great eagerness. Hallelujah. Remember the day you became a Christian when everything is fresh? The word is fresh, the song is fresh, the fellowship is fresh, you know, everything is fresh and nice and good. How did you feel? I believe all of us, we feel good, we feel nice, wonderful, we want to come again, you know. Uh, may that freshness continue to remain in our life. And even if we come across something we don't like to hear, right, something that causes us to feel uncomfortable or inconvenient in some sense, but as long as it's from the Lord, our hearts are open to receive from him. We are open to the voice and the leading of the Spirit. We are teachable in spirit. We are willing to unlearn and even to learn new things from the Spirit. Amen. Not only openness, but there is also a sense of personal responsibility. In verse 11 again, it says, They examine the scriptures every day. Wow. To see if what Paul said was true. They personally examine the scripture every day to see if what Paul said was true. So there's no passing of the buck. There's no pointing of fingers. There is a, a, an assuming of personal responsibility over the things under our care. And here, of course, it is the study of God's Word. And, and yes, we need to study God's Word. We need to know what the Bible actually said. Right? But besides that, even in other areas of life, 
We, we want to assume a personal responsibility. We don't want to point fingers. I, of course, we can you know, point the finger. We can say that it is because of that, or because of this, or that person, and on and so forth. But not just end up pointing fingers or so. We need to ask the question now, what am I going to do about it? What am I going to do about it? You know? And that is the personal responsibility that we need to assume. But I call attention to this third point, sub point that I have for you. You know, genuine results. And that's what it really matters at the end of the day. Not just impression, all right? Not just, you know, uh, artificial, external, all right? But real genuine, you know, heartfelt, right? birth from within you, all right? Or the work of the Spirit in our lives. You know, in verse 4, when Paul was in this city, Thessalonica, and he preached the gospel, he, he explained, he reasoned, and he proved about Jesus and on and so forth. And the Bible says that many Jews were persuaded and they joined Paul and Silas. They were persuaded and they joined Paul and Silas. You know, they joined him. Of course, many other people rejected and you don't want to hear them anymore. But many persuaded and joined. And then in verse 12 here, all right, when we come to this section here, he says, as a result, many believe. All right? Earlier on, it was persuaded and joined. But here in verse 12, they believe. And of course, he went on to say, a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. But the word is there, they join. And then later, of course, this is a different group. Lah, but we have a different expression. They join and then they, they now believe. Wow, praise the Lord. They join and now they believe. And if I can go ahead all right, to my uh, verse 34, to my third point, and respond in that, in, in that situation, early on they join, then they believe, and verse 34, it says, they followed them. And I think this is most powerful. They join, they believe, and they followed them. We can join but not believe. All right? We can join because after service, got tea break. Got tea break today, I didn't, didn't mention tea break. <laughs> And I'm not saying that we come because of tea break. I'm sorry if I find offended. There may be many reasons you know, why we join. All right? And if, if we are like, like Brahman, we, we welcome everybody. Amen. Like what is in this video? We welcome everybody. All right? And yes, they join because they were persuaded. All right? They were persuaded that it's good to, if it's worthwhile spending the time there. All right? Okay? And, and of course, you know, that word join also means they become believers. But I like to call your attention to just join. They, they join. And later as they spend time with us, they become believers. They believe in what we say. Right? They believe in what we believe. They have made commitment. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good progress. But they didn't stop there. Okay? They became followers. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. Amen. I have the opportunity to visit a few churches. And most of these churches are AG churches. But the word AG also means aging. <laughs> okay, I will get stoned if, I, if news go out of this room. But, but what I'm going to call attention to, I got a chance to visit some outskirt churches, you know, outskirt small town, and, that. and they are aging. Why? Because the youth, after they finish Form 5, Form 6, or, you know, they will move on for further studies or for job opportunities. Okay, they move on. Raise your hand. How many of you are not from JB? Raise your hand. Ah, almost half of this wall. Ah. Now you were elsewhere and you come because of work. Raise your hand. Yeah, because of education. Because your wife is here. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm not from JB. My wife's from JB. <laughs> you know. So the smaller towns lose their members. And uh, those who stay back are usually uh, older, settle down, and they don't plan to have any more children, okay? And... So those churches are aging. I wonder what will happen in 10, 20 years' time. Of course, miracles do happen. God will raise up His church, we know. But many churches are aging. You know. In fact, I, when I was preparing this sermon, I was looking at the Christian Life series, the one that you use in your cell group. And I was looking at the chapter for today's message. Uh, it's about growing churches, uh, church growth. And as I looked through the material, I saw that they only have two points. Usually, I'm accustomed to three points. Pop, 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 you know? And I, I saw only two points. I feel like something is missing. So I check again and again and again. I realized that that lesson only has two points. The first point is about putting down roots. 
foundation matters. And then the second point is about branches and bearing fruits. And that's it. Then I told myself, well, maybe I'm supposed to preach the third point. <laughs> right? And I was pondering about it. If I were to follow that lead, I would like to preach on duplicating ourselves. Or if I can find another word for it. What it means, what I want to say is that after us, do we have others who will follow and take over from us and come alongside and surpass us? You know? Huh? Do we have? Or oh, when it comes to us, that's it. You know, it is buried with us. <laughs> no, no, no. Bible says they join, they believe, and they follow. You know, very wonderful. If all we want our children to follow us, right? And we want people. Around, not everybody will do what we do, right? But we, we are hoping that you know they see, they saw, they join, they believe in what you are doing, and they gave their life to what you are doing. And when you are no longer doing, they will take over and they go beyond us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You know, we're not just talking about today. We're talking about 10 years from today, 20 years. The church continues to thrive. Amen? Praise the Lord. Long after we... Not that we go in khaki, relax, no need to do anything anymore. Huh? But the church continues to move on. Hallelujah. Uh, we're going to have Bible study uh, on the book of Revelation. And one of the key things in the book of Revelation is the tribulation. And I, I think more than 15 chapters are dedicated all right, for, the, for the tribulation. Tough times, difficult times, a lot of dying, a lot of disaster, who, you name it, is all packed in there in those few chapters. And, um, but one of the main significant things is God has never left himself without a witness. You know? We have 144,000 witnesses. We have the great multitude in heaven. That means if they are in heaven, they were on earth. Okay? And, and it's mentioned there, they were the tribulation saints. And then we have the two wonderful witnesses with the power of God. They did wonder, wonderful things. I think we have all the angels. But, but, but the thing is, on earth, God has never left himself without a witness. That means there were people who were faithful. There were people who continued to witness to the gospel and to God and love and mercy. There were many who were willing to lay their life down well, you know, for God and for the gospel. That means their heart remained true to the Lord in tough, difficult days, during days, years of tribulation, they never gave up their faith. Amen. We thought we were all the only one, but there were many who were faithful unto the Lord. So may may courageous praise, church of prayer. And we are into a building program, right? And not just about our building, okay? And long after we are no longer around, the church continue on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our children worship in the church. Our grandchildren worship in the church. Our great-grandchildren worship. Oh, ah, not so far, lah, okay? but, but whatever it is, the legacy continue on. Hallelujah. And, 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 and we can only have that if we have it in our hearts. Amen. If we have it in our hearts. It's there. It's not artificial. It's not just the name. Oh, I, 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 I put this on and I told my wife, I look like... No, the, the hotel people who opened the door, good afternoon, sir. You know, <laughs> I say I look like that. <laughs> Do I look like that? Yeah. Huh? I open the door, good afternoon, welcome to hotel, church of praise. Yeah. <laughs> you know, not just a dress or a shirt, you know, a logo or something like that. No, it is real in our hearts. All right? It is real. Let's say even if it's no longer about church of praise, it is still real in our hearts. Amen. Let's say it's no longer about Johor Bahru, Bukit Indah. Yes, but it's still real in our hearts. Amen. Amen. That what we do today, continue, we continue to do if we were elsewhere. The passion remains. The vision remains. The dream remains. The inspiration remains. Amen. Right? Because we have it in our hearts. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we, we pray, you know, the Lord not just renew our mind, but the Lord refresh our hearts also. There is a song that uh, we, we, we sometimes sing. Right, uh, the title is Pure Hearts, and the lyric says, A pure heart, that's what I long for. A heart that follows heart after thee. Right? A heart that hides your word. A heart that's undivided. A heart that beats compassion. Right? And so that sin will not come in, so that Jesus will rule and reign, so that we will please you in everything. Okay? A sweet aroma of worship that rises to your throne. And it's not because they start playing the music, they flash the lyrics on the screen, no. It's already in our hearts. Amen. I, I desire to worship the Lord and to praise the Lord. May our prayers be like the prayer of David. 
where David says, Create in me a pure heart, O God. Create in me a pure heart. And we, we pray the Lord will refresh our hearts. And that's what the church is here for, to refresh our hearts. Amen. Praise the Lord. I come to my last point, and uh, to rekindle our spirit. Not only to renew our mind, to refresh our hearts, but to rekindle once again all right, our spirit. Our spirit or our soul. I like to put the two together. Uh, verse 23, very quickly, we go to 17, verse 23. And Paul now is at Athens, okay, and he addresses a group of people in the city of Athens. He says, For as I walk around and look carefully at your objects of worship, I even found an altar with this inscription, To an unknown God. To an unknown God. So you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. And this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. What gives me the greatest joy? Ah, yes, when my wife sent me a message. <laughs> yes, of course. That is, I have to say that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, it's true also. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> she says the same thing also. Right? Okay. But that aside, lah, because that one I will always be true forever and ever. Huh? Okay. But uh, work wise, work wise, okay? I praise the Lord. I, 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 I still live with joy, right? If someone calls me and says, Pastor Hey, can you come and preach for me? I won't say, oh, oh my goodness, preach again. Oh, I drag my feet. No, I, I'm not boasting. I'm not saying it. I still live with joy. I say, praise the Lord. I will go, you know? And, you know, and sometimes I agree without knowing, hey, what am I supposed to preach on? Huh? <laughs> you know? And uh, where, where is the church? Huh? You know, I never ask all these questions. Okay. Then I agree, then only I ask, uh, when is, where is that? Of course, the date, lah, I don't want to clash with other commitments. I was just asking. So that's still my joy. You know? And I praise the Lord. You know, as, as far as this area, my heart, my spirit is still rekindled. It's still burning. Right? And of course, there are many other areas in life that we need to maintain that, that, that fire, that passion, that zeal, that zealousness. We cannot be in every area of life. But at least the one that God has called you to, uh, you find the joy. You find the passion, you find the drive, you find the inspiration. And it may not necessarily be church work. Lah. It could be outside. It could be the children's home. It could be your work. Well, wow, imagine you drag your feet to work. Oh, you, you know, I pray and hope that the, that earthquake, you know, the, the ground open up, swallow up the, you know. I tell you, uh, this happened in Bible school. It came from the mouth of one of the students. And I understand where he was coming from. Lah. But praise the Lord, he is still faithful and his church is growing. But this is what he said on Friday. He said, Pastor, when I come to Bible school, oh, we, on Friday, oh, we pack our bags ready to go back to church to serve, you know. Uh, wow, that is very wonderful. But he said, along the way, I don't know why I lost it. I don't know why I lost it. If it rains on Friday, I'm very happy. He said, now when it rains on Friday, I'm very happy. On the way back on my motorbike, if my motorbike breaks down, I'm very happy. You know why? That means he no need to go back to church. <laughs> Somehow that thing has come into his life, set in. He finds that, that the joy is no more there. The passion is no more there. The motivation is no more there. Maybe there are many reasons. Lah, huh? And he begins to drag his feet. You know. But God always calls us to come back to the altar and to rededicate our lives to him and to be rekindled once again right, in our spirit and soul. Our earthly bodies are temporal, but our spirits and souls live forever. Okay, Jesus has come to provide salvation for our souls and spirits. And the Holy Spirit testifies with our spirits that we are children of God. We were once dead, but now we are alive. We were once blind, but now we see. Yes, and God, through His church, desires to rekindle that spirit, that, that fire right, that, is, that is in us. Amen. So what, 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 what about this rekindling of the spirit? Okay? Number one, Paul says, I found an altar with this inscription, to an unknown God. But for us Christians, our God is not unknown. Okay? We can know our God. And the word know there is not just head knowledge, right? facts, information, no, but experiential. Okay? That means we experience it. How do I know Jesus lives? We sing in the hymn, He lives in my heart. You know? We can point to an incident, maybe not too long ago, you know, where as far as you are concerned, that was an act of God in your life. You, know? you, you sensed Him, you felt Him, you knew He was there for you, you know? You have a testimony right, in your heart okay, that demonstrates and shows that your God is real. For us, we know our God. You know, 
And that's why we call him Heavenly Father. Wow, we call him Daddy. Wow. But that was what he meant at that time when he was used, Abba. Right? And we were intimate. We used to it intimate <laughs> in our worship to the Lord. Okay? We are not just uh, ritualistic, but we are really expressing our feeling uh, right, to the Lord. And we can sense his response to us also. In fact, Jesus says this is eternal life. What is eternal life? Jesus says that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus whom you have sent. That they may know you. Eternal life is not just life, eternal. No, it's that you know God. What, what's the point of going to heaven and you don't know the God that is there? You know? But if you know, you experience Him, you want to go there so that you know Him more. Hallelujah. The little bit that we experience here about Him inspires us to want to know more about Him when we get there. Hallelujah. And not only to know God, sorry, okay, but we want to have true worship also. All right? Uh, Paul says here, uh, you are ignorant of the very thing you worship. You are ignorant of the very thing that you worship. And then in John, the gospel, Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman. Jesus says, so salvation comes from the Jews. All right? Uh, you worship what you do not know, but we Jews, we worship what we know. And when Jesus says we Jews, he refers to all of us also because we are, in one sense, spiritual Jews. We worship what we know. Hallelujah. But there was a time in the history of the church where the people in church do not know the God that they worship. Right? They, really, they just follow the books. Okay? They just follow the... When the priest say this, they respond. The priest say, there is there's a lot of head knowledge, in a sense, in theories, all right? and, 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 and dogmas, you know, decrees and confessions and things like that. But there is a great lack of vacuum in their hearts. Right? About God. And that's why God revived His church. That's why God brings reform to His church, renewal movements and on and so forth, to revive His church, to bring His church back okay, into His fall, into His relationship with Him. That's why sometimes when we are far away from God, we feel so cold, we feel so lost. But when we are back into it, well, we sense the fire, we sense the enjoyment, we sense the drive, you know. Oh, why did, oh, we, we, we are glad we are back. And that's why David says, I'm glad, so glad, when they say unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Amen. And that's what, you know, Paul is saying here, that we worship what we know. Hallelujah. Somebody says, it is only when we begin to worship God that we begin to grow. Amen. When we begin to worship God, we begin to grow. Worship has a positive impact on your life. Of course, we must avoid extremes. All right? But when we worship God, you know who is God, you know who you are. All right? Okay, you can sense His holiness, you can sense that you are sinful, but that knowledge doesn't drive you away. It causes you to want to come to Him, and it causes you to want to remain in Him, in His presence. Worship makes you feel you're not alone. God is with you. Worship gives you the strength and the power to carry on. Hallelujah. No matter, you may go out there and be defeated, but you can still walk up and continue on for the Lord because that's what worship does to you. Worship tells you you have not come to the end of your rope. Amen. Because God is still with you. And with God, everything is a beginning. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So worship is a powerful influence over your life. And today we had a wonderful time of worshiping and praising the Lord. Hallelujah. I always thank the Lord for wonderful musicians because I've been to some church. Uh, uh, I don't know how to describe <laughs> I think they are, they are trying to be, uh, have the gift of diversity. <laughs> yeah, they are trying to live up to their gift of diversity. Although I'm not musically inclined, but I know everybody is playing a different key. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> something that sings one key and, and somebody tries to help out with a different key and the one who tried to help out, he also changed key. <laughs> Maybe they are trying to sing in parts, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I, that's why we must praise the Lord. You know, wonderful group of people, talented. You know. Let's not say use them. They have made themselves available. Open your hearts. You know. Worship the Lord. Let the Lord, the Spirit come and do a wonderful work in your life. You will not be the same again. Amen. The tea afterwards will definitely taste better. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so when we begin to worship God, we begin to grow. Another person says this, the more you pray, the less you will panic. The more you worship, the less you worry. You will feel more patient and less pressured. Amen. Well, 
That's only one way to find out whether this saying is true or not, and that is to practice it. Amen. So next Saturday, make sure you open your hearts and worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, sorry, sorry, not yet, not yet. Uh, the last point there is uh, purposeful living. All right? And that's why when we leave this place, we want to leave this place with joy. We want to leave this place with, I can. Not Malaysia will here, but I can. <laughs> I, I can face it. Right? I, can, I can survive. I will survive. Amen. Not the song, I will survive, but I will survive. Right? And uh, I can live up you know, to what God has for me. Right? You, you leave this place with this assurance, purposeful living. Paul says, and this is what I'm going to proclaim to you. Amen. When our spirits are rekindled, we desire to serve God. We desire to fulfill the purpose He has for us. When our spirits are rekindled, we are ready to move on, yes, and take on the task that is ahead of us. Amen. I'd like to call attention to the story of King David. Uh, the Bible tells us one day he's, he, he is very close to God. He is known as the one closest to the heart of God. And after him, there's no one who has taken his place or overtook him. He is still, until today, the closest to the heart of God. Okay? And, but he sinned against the Lord. He did something terrible, uh, more than one. All right? But this is what he says uh, in Psalms 51. I'd like to read it to you in summary. Uh, of course, his sin was exposed and he has no choice. I mean, he was also convicted and he responded to the Lord in this way. He says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me, but yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. So he confessed, he acknowledged, he asked God to forgive him. Amen. And then he says, cleanse me with, with his soap and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sin and blot out my iniquity. Yes, even he acknowledged he was sinful, he did something terrible, but yet, yet he still dared to lift his face to the Lord and ask the Lord to do the impossible. <laughs> okay. And then he says, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me out from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. And the last line says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. I think he is saying, he's asking God to rekindle uh, his spirit. So after David confessed his sins and prayed for a pure heart and a steadfast and willing spirit to sustain him, this is what he said. He said, Then I will teach transgressors your ways, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness, and my mouth will declare your praise. Amen. When he prayed that his spirit will be rekindled, uh, he confessed his sins and everything. And then, but the last line, he says, give me a willing spirit to sustain me. That means rekindle my spirit. And then he says this, I will teach, I will sing, I will declare. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And this is what the church is all about. We look around, we are very saddened by what is happening. We wonder whether there is hope or not. And Brother Mohan has led us in that powerful prayer just now. But as we look to the Lord, and that's what he prayed also. All right? We see wonderful things. We see possibilities. Right? We see God opening the door. Right? We see God coming in. And that's what Revelation, you must come for class tomorrow. Right? That's what Revelation is. Right? <laughs> Revelation is basically means Jesus wins at the end of the day. Right? And not only Jesus, all those who have put their trust and hope in Him, they will also win. Amen. But just that the winning prize, I, you, have, you have to wait to know what is the winning prize. Right? Anyway, anyway, you know, we are saddened. We are sad. We are given up hope. And sometimes when we read the news, we don't want to proceed to read anymore. We just don't have, we do just don't want to read anymore. Same old story, we'll say, you know. But let us look to the Lord. Okay? Let's pray and ask God to rekindle our spirit. Okay? And when our spirit is rekindled, we are prepared to move on. And not only prepared to move on, we look with expectancy, all right, what is going to happen in the near future. Amen. And not just about church, it can be your career. It can be your relationship, all right, your family, your marriage, and on and so forth. And we all go through tough times, okay? But when we come into the presence of the Lord, we open our hearts to Him, 
we allow God to do that work, the wonderful work in our life, so that we can continue on and live the life that He has for us. We will dance with joy and we will give praise and glory to Him. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let's pray. Hallelujah.